This episode of TechZilla is brought to you by the 2012 Ford Mustang. Time to get our AC Nation on. And I got to say, AC Nation, quite gentle. You lovely audience, you, when you corrected Mr. Heron last week. Thankfully gentle, I want to say. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me on my toes, by the way. Uh, last week's show, I made a statement saying that DisplayPort's interface lacks audio support. As in, you know, HDMI carries audio. You said yeah. DisplayPort doesn't carry audio. Mm. Uh, I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out that a couple of pins on the DisplayPort interface are configured as such that when a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter cable is connected, the HD HDMI device actually receives an audio signal. Mm. Quite nice, I gotta say. Uh, quite a few of you wrote in to recommend or suggest that, or tell me that your notebooks with DisplayPort out when using that adapter cable mm -hmm. would provide HDMI audio support to your HDMI display, which is great. And also, please consider this my monthly reminder not to spend more than you have to on AV cables. Even a good DisplayPort to HDMI cable can be had for less than 10 bucks online. So. Monoprice.com, people. I did not know that. Why am I holding a garbage can? You are not holding a garbage can. <laughs> that is a serious piece of wireless technology. That's, That's actually an outdoor speaker from the Rocket Fish Rocket Boost folks. That's one of the house brands at uh, Best Buy. Sure is. And we'd like to point out, this is not a commercial. We actually have something really cool here, not just the Rocket Fish, um, the wireless speakers from Rocket Fish. Heck yeah. But we have this little module, which plugs the Rocket Boost module, which plugs into yeah. this Insignia Television, which is another house brand over at Best Buy, that allows you to do a wireless subwoofer and wireless speakers. Totally, or soundbar, or they even have kits for using your own speakers if you want to just connect your own speakers to a wireless adapter, mm -hmm. which it works pretty darn easy. This happens to be the Best Buy house brand TV. It's the Insignia Connected TV. It's available in 32 and 40 inch screen sizes, $500 and $700 respectively for that. With that money, you get a 1080p screen resolution, edge-lit LED backlighting technology, 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, built-in ABGN wireless, nice, and as we mentioned, the Rocketfish wireless audio ready. From get to Rocket the good Boost. part. Get to the TiVo part. I know. <laughs> uh, headphone jack, uh, RF remote, as well as infrared, really nice. Uh, nicely loaded, and it's TiVo design. So this is the future of TiVo, built into your TV already. Uh, but a big catch on that. And you'll see it on the box, if you uh -oh. look at the box in the store or if you look at the stickers on the TV, they're really careful to point out this is TiVo design. Uh, it is not a DVR. There's not a DVR built in. Uh, TiVo's usability expertise was apparent. Uh, everything from setup to use of the TV, you'll find that the menu systems, if you hit the TiVo button up at the top, it is and sounds and <laughs> looks like the TiVo interface that a lot of you probably are somewhat in. Uh, familiar with. That's the best part, it's a little dook dook. That's actually the second thing I adjusted. Before I uh, turned off overscan, I turned the TiVo sound down to low. <laughs> although, although medium lets you know what it is. Uh, I gotta say, the menu layout, navigation, performance, and the fact that it's an RF remote make this a pretty seamless experience, even compared to using a right. standard TiVo. Uh, integrated wireless is pretty cool because it did it automatically check for updates as soon as you hooked it up to the wireless network. That was great. Uh, not only did it guide me to show me what local wireless systems were available, entered my password, all that good stuff, but then it immediately checked for an update for all the software built into the TV, mm -hmm. which includes something called also the Chumby platform. That's basically a flash-based... Chumby? Chumby. The little chumby sort of pillow with a screen on it thing. Or no, I'm thinking of the. Uh, I'm thinking yeah. of like the little octopus looking. That's thing. the one. Is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flash-based set of apps that you can use, and it also includes the usual suspects like your Netflix, Pandora, Cinema Now, Facebook, or and Twitter as well. Now in the lab, I gotta say the connected TV. Uh, it's theater picture preset delivered the most accurate coverage of the HD color space. I actually have a good graph of that right here I can bring up and show you. Here's the color chart for HD color space, and you can see the points, the circles, actually land in the squares pretty close. And for a, a relatively inexpensive TV, not bad at all. Now, as far as the grayscale goes, right next door here, you can see that Granted, uh, there's a little bit of variance, but overall, the airs that are present are blue airs, which is good. It's better than having, say, a green air, which is really noticeable. And they're all floating pretty close to 100%, so that basically my shades of gray are looking pretty good. However, you can see there is some room for adjustment there, right. and it could be improved upon. And the white balance controls in this TV are actually hidden from the owner, <laughs> which I was a little disappointed uh, in. Uh, it turns out that the access code is provided to the Geek Squad gang, and they are allowed then to access the white balance controls in the TV. However, I just found online that it, you can pretty much find these codes to get into the uh, white balance <laughs> controls for the TV. Apparently they're the same as Samsung's. So oh, if you know Samsung's access code for their menu system, 
you know this one. Yeah, Samsung HHV access code on Google. I thought it was interesting actually that they, they make it really clear all the individual HDMI settings. They make it as simple as possible that you are adjusting these HDMI settings or those HDMI it's settings. It's really nice. The wording for the menu setup, uh, Audio too, there are so many, if you just use the back button on the audio or on the D-pad, and the key thing is I keep pointing the remote at the TV, it takes you a while to get used to the fact you don't have to do that. A ton of options for audio. We mentioned the wireless audio option. Odyssey's dynamic volume, if you're sick of those loud commercials during your, uh, during your, I don't know, the elective cycle for right. government officials, it's a great way to turn that down. <laughs> or at least moderate the sound that's coming out of your speaker system. Uh, other things? Basically, manual adjustments. You can turn the audio speakers off. It supports audio return channel if you're using an updated AV receiver. Uh, just a, a solid display all around at a good price. Swivel base, thin design, edge lit. I read some complaints oh. online that they were they were having a lot of uniformity issues where they were getting maybe what they call flash lighting or glare out of the corners of the screen. I didn't see a lot of that. Overall, for an edge lit LCD, this looked pretty good to my eyes. I, I put up some of the more challenging test patterns. Particularly a, a flat green screen, a, a low green, like a, mm -hmm. a, a very dim green or a dim gray, like it, like we did on the D8000 display from Samsung, that showed significant uh, uh, problems with uniformity on the screen, whereas on this TV, pretty consistent. Overall, impressive for an edge lit at this price. It, it's kind of funny, like, I think both of us were profoundly disappointed. There's no TiVo DVR functionality built in, but once you get no. over that, it's yeah. actually a pretty solid HD TV. I mean, uh, Maybe, maybe one thing I would wish for is that you could plug a hard drive into it and it would just become a TiVo, but that's asking a lot, so. I don't think it's asking a lot. I think it's asking the right question. Or, or <laughs> if it could connect to your network storage and just use that, you wouldn't have to attach anything at all. See, awesome. maybe that's the future of TiVo. But overall, solid for either a 32 inch or 42 inch that's super easy to set up and has all of the online features that you might expect for a new TV nowadays. I haven't seen one that's any easier to set up than this one, and especially if you're familiar with TiVo's interface. It's, it's almost a no-brainer. Almost. Yeah, almost. <laughs> BestBuy.com is a place to buy it, or Best Buy stores. You're not going to be finding this one on Amazon because Insignia is a has brand over at this Best Buy. Hey, and now it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of October 11th, 2011. First up, The Tree of Life, this much-anticipated 2011 movie about the meaning of life, viewed from a Midwestern man's life from childhood to adult, directed by Terrence Malick, released on a single 50 gigabyte disc encoded in MPEG-4 AVC at 1080p in a 184 to 1 aspect ratio. Blu-ray.com gives the video and audio quality high praise, noting that, quote, no overt compression artifacts nor other troubles. The only sore point uh, to the disc is the lack of extras or features with Exploring the Tree of Life, a behind the scenes short filling out the category. Next up, Horrible Bosses, Totally Inappropriate Edition, a 2011 comedy centered around three friends who desire nothing more than to bump off their obnoxious, self-interested bosses. Issued on two 50 gigabyte Blu-ray discs encoded at 1080p with MPEG-4 AVC video and a DTS-HD Master Audio 5.1 audio soundtrack. High Dev Digest applauds the sharp details and accurate black levels. They were slightly le less enthusiastic about the audio. Although it was clear and well-balanced, the actual mix felt uninspired, earning a meh from the reviewer. The extras were disappointing pieces with the cast and crew about their horrible boss experiences, plus a liberal smattering of profanities. And as always, check out our show notes at techzilla.com or hdnation.tv for links to the rest of this week's Blu-ray releases. Time to thank one of our new sponsors, Ford. The crew at Ford has loaned us a new 2012 Mustang to drive around this fall, and we could not be more excited. It is decked out with tons of new features and tech. We're going to show that off over the next couple months, but it is not just a pretty ride. Case in point, the 5-liter V8 engine. The Mustang 5.0 engine pays homage to the original 5.0, delivering 412 horsepower and 390 foot-pounds of glorious hill climbing truck passing torque. The aluminum V8 power plant that keeps the weight low over the front wheels packs twin into independent variable camshaft timing and cold air induction to help pump out more power. Matter of fact, Ford engineered every part under the hood to work in harmony so the muscular 5.0 breathes efficiently and drops that distinctive throaty roar that is pure Mustang. Standing on the throttle feels so good. Let me say it again, we are excited to be working with Ford and to have them as a sponsor this week. Thanks again to Ford and for the 2012 Mustang. Go out and drive one. It is fun, people.